Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about Rest and my sequel. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, I am a React developer. I've been a React developer for two years uh, on a complicated application and I want to move into a full stack role. What is the best res What are the best resources to learn everything I need in a database, say MySQL, to be able to obtain a mid-level full stack job? Also, what is the best resource to learn how to design REST APIs properly? Thanks in advance. Well, uh, as for the best resources and so forth, that's going to be a tricky one. I would say that uh, for th these, this becomes a two-parter. So let's talk about the database first and foremost, because the rest thing is a little bit more. It's a little bit more difficult to answer that question. Uh, when it comes to MySQL and so forth, I want you to know that the big dirty secret about databases within the application developers community is that. Uh, Guys, nobody knows anything about databases apart from the basics, usually. And when I say the basics, I'm usually referring to like the CRUD applications, create, read, update, delete these operations, how to actually just query to the database, the, like the uh, the SQL um, language, or, well, depending on what you're using, if you're using Mongo or Neo4j or whatever you might be using, right? The query language is the, practically for most software developers the thing that they focus the mess, most on, just to kind of know how to use the database. Apart from that, it, this is a MySQL, so it's a relational da database. You're going to have to learn things like primary key, foreign key, uh, like what is a table, what is a row, etc, etc. These basic concepts and like uh, then you're going to have to look at say joining things, like joining tables onto each other uh, and then of course ACID, like being able to know what an atomic operation is and rollbacks and all that good stuff. Uh, and then finally indexing. Uh, because a database without an index can become, especially if it's a, if it's a big one, the query is going to take longer and longer if you don't know what an index is. So these, like, there might be some things that I don't, uh, I'm not thinking about right now when I'm just talking. But these are like the bare basics of what you do with the database, and there's so much more you could be doing. There's so much more to just a single database like MySQL. There are so many things you could do, uh, but for the most part, that's all the application developer knows, if even that. In some cases, people don't even know what an index is, or they've never used you know, ACID operations or anything like that. Uh, and on the whole, it doesn't matter all that much, uh, unless unless you're managing like the database clusters in your company or something like that but for regular application developers or web developers uh, that's all they kind of need to know because that's like to the the extent they need to inform themselves in order to do their job usually and then there of course there are like dbas and specialists and so forth that look into this thing but they are in many cases i would say a dying breed uh, unless you were talking about companies who have like a major 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 setup when it comes to their storage systems. So that's all you need to know. And as for best resources, guys, you can find that on the MySQL documentation page. Literally any blog will do to teach you these basics. So just go and take a look, learn the basics because it's practically all, like I don't think I have updated, uh, well, I'm not gonna go that far. Uh, I still think that most of what I learned about uh, say MySQL, uh, that knowledge, I got that in school, and it still has. I ha still haven't needed to update it so far for work purposes. It's the same thing with Mongo, uh, MongoDB. Uh, most of the stuff that I learned about MongoDB was years and years and years ago, and I haven't had to like progress that knowledge practically, apart from a few specific projects that I was working on, you kind of read the documentation, but the basics gets you like almost 80-90% of the way, and anybody can teach you. For REST APIs, it gets a little bit more difficult, because um, hopefully you won't kill me if I tell you that there is no one who is going to be able to teach you where, like, what best practices are or like what's the best resource to learn how to do REST because practically nobody can align on what that actually is. 
the best thing I can tell you is that here learning how to uh, y you can take pick up practically it's kind of like architecture this one in my opinion at least uh, the the stuff that you can read about rest the stuff that has like the theory just as with architecture the theory is just the like the tip of the iceberg of what it's the tip of the iceberg for a person who really knows their shit in this area and it's the thing that you learn at one point and it kind of is in the back of your head but most of your skills within designing a rest api or things like that it's not going to come through theory it's going to go come through experience and working with a lot of different projects a lot of different um, setups most companies don't strictly follow a rest like any type of rest structure they are rest ish whatever that means it probably means that you have a resource name in plural with an ID, optional ID after in most of your API designs, something like that. That's sort of restful, right? But the the sad, this, the, well, it's not sad, but this, the reality is, guys, that people mix and match it. Practically every company, RPC calls, style calls with REST APIs. And if you just know, like you can pick up any article, literally any article on REST, learn the basic o basics of what the structure is sort of about, and that's going to be fine. That's going to be, as I was saying, it's like with the database. It's this thing that the vast majority of developers, they learn like the basics of it, just so they can kind of identify what REST is, so they know the topic somewhat. And then they kind of just go with the flow, with whatever makes sense for the moment in whatever application they're dealing with. The only time real strong REST design is usually on the table where you're like really serious about making it good is if you're creating some type of public facing API when you have like customers or something like that where they're going to use it. For, for the guys, for the most of you, you're not going to do that. Most of you are going to have like REST APIs that talk to a single client which is usually going to be your front end or some other team's application and like interconnections and stuff like that it's re exceedingly rare that you work with a company where like they care about these practices to that extent for internal calls it's kind of in some cases at the very least a little, a little bit of the wild west where whatever you like whatever makes sense for the moment is the thing you go with you don't follow rest just for the sake of doing rest and in many cases I mean, even Google does this. Uh, it's it doesn't really make sense to do REST, pure REST or like real REST uh, for all situations, especially not for internal calls, because REST is really it, it's really, in my opinion, at the very least, it's more well suited for generic APIs than anything else. Because if you're following REST to the letter or trying to be very restful uh, you're basically just putting a thin layer on top of a storage system of some sort usually and if you think about that that doesn't really make sense if you have a single client that you own because if you have a single client that you own uh, and you're using pure stress you have to make a lot of calls to build up your data model because usually a single client needs several pieces of data in order to render out a page or like if you're doing an SBA thing or whatever you're doing uh, and instead of making multiple calls let's just make one call that's kind of what GraphQL is all about and why people ex are excited about that so what I want you to take away from this is that I can't give you the best resources on MySQL or REST because I don't think that it will actually like just pick up literally any book literally any blog article it's the same thing with the architecture these guys these are topics where the theory is going to give you such a skin deep understanding of the thing that it really doesn't matter who teaches you this stuff because the real in-depth like strong ex uh, knowledge that makes the difference in these areas that's not going to come from the theory it's going to come from you building a lot of stuff I can promise you that. It's, in my opinion, it's similar to uh, most fields such as, say, hacking or similar sorts of, or operations, where it's a field where the vast majority of people who are good at this stuff, they didn't read 
to get to that level. It's not a theoretical subject. It's a much more experience-based subject than anything else. And that experience is best gained through hands-on learning. And you'll gonna, you're, I promise you, you're going to get there. And the best part is you're going to get start your journey by just reading the basics. And that's going to be good enough for the most, uh, for like 80% of the situations you find yourself in. Have a great day.